Well, I got another used Enfield. Uh, this is a black powder muzzle loader. See, it's the ones that Confederates use. It's a reproduction. Um, it's in really excellent shape. I mean, it's nearly perfect. Um, I paid a, like I paid 500 for it, which is a good deal considering uh, you know what they cost now. This was about a little less than half of what I paid for the uh, basically brand new Parker Howe. Uh, Anfield that was made in the UK. Um, yeah, I got these. Well, these are nine dollars, I think. I got this. this is the musk. I got three boxes of that. It's a, just a ball. I, I, I got powder for the pistol, but I got to get some powder for the rifle. Um, I think my pistol powder might work. It says it's almost flawless. You know, it's got. You know, it's been used a little bit, very little. Come with a sling. And it also came with that case. So, huh. See that sucker? It's pretty good, huh? It's pretty good. And, you know, it, this is kind of like the standard rifle that uh, any of the reenactors use. It's not, you know, it's uh, ar army. It's, uh, Made in Italy, you know, A R M I Army Sport Italy. It's like uh, this is kind of like a standard, uh, good quality rifle that they use the reenactors use. I wouldn't really be reenacting with it. And typically, they would do is uh, I don't know what this is. This is like a, you know a polyurethane finish. Normally, what they would do to make them look more like the real ones original ones they would take that finish off of them and they'd oil them they'd use an oil stain and they'd do a couple other things they take like this mark off of here and I really really cares actually what I'm working on recently we go into the gym and I might really start pouring it on today kind of I didn't like the music that was in the gym they're playing this stuff they probably hear in Camden New Jersey and I was like and recently they fixed that music <laughs> I was busy working on that car, doing a transmission, doing a camshaft, busy putting up this big flagpole, and various things that was coming up. So I was kind of going there sporadically. But I've been going there nearly every day now, except when I have to work. And uh, I think I'm going to start pouring it on. The reason I'm saying that is because, uh, you know, people get fussy with these things when they wear the uniform. You know, most people wear Confederates wore the uniform from the clothes on their back from their home, and they took their own rifle. They weren't issued any rifle, but these the most most of the Confederates use this three band Enfield. And uh, I'm not sure if I'm gonna. The only thing I might do that's not gonna be correct if I actually shoot this thing is maybe change the sights to uh, like a peep sight, like a circle, a ghost sight ghost ring in the back and a something like something like that so um, you know because if I actually use it for sh shooting uh, the sights are, I hate this kind of sights you know these these kind of sights I don't like them I like the ones with the, the ring in them but we should they block out half the target you know when you're looking through them but you know this is still it's uh I mean it came with the sling and everything in that little case and they wrapped it up really good but like I said, one thing I want to work on is uh, getting skinny. I want to actually look like anorexic, practically like I was before. Uh, that goes along. You know, they're talking about uh, defarbing rifles, taking the marks off. That, you can't tell from uh, 10 feet away what the hell it is. But you can tell a fat body. <laughs> and uh, I'm no, I'm no more, no more than a fat body than a typical free American. But I want, I want to look like a. On the lean side, Confederate. I want to defarb my body and uh, ain't worried about getting everything exactly correct with it. You know, the, yeah, look at that. Say <laughs> everything exactly correct with the uniform and stuff, and like $150 shoes and stuff that are leather bottoms and nailed together. And you know, I don't care about that. You wear brogans. Yeah, this thing looks nice though. Looks very nice. It looks virtually brand new. Very little, you know. I mean, 
But you see, what I like about it, it's in excellent condition, virtually brand new. But it's not so freaking brand new. And it's not a Parker Howl, too, you know? I don't want to shoot that Parker Howl because it's like, it's pristine, man. It's pristine, brand new. I don't want it so freaking, it doesn't even scratch on it. This has real, a little scratch right there. I mean, it's almost nothing. A little bit of, you know, around a barrel here or something. I mean, the rifling's on this is really good. Um, it's almost brand new shape. It's in excellent condition, but it's not so. And it's not. It's not a Parker Hall. It's just a, you know a standard, you know Italian repo, which is they're good. These are good rifles. And I noticed uh, when you put this, kind of like this because uh, when you put on half cock, it's got plenty of room. Put put. Uh, Put your cap on there, percussion cap. It looks like they changed this out. This is, looks like this has been changed right there. And full, see, in other words, sometimes they don't pull back that much. See, in other words, so looks fine to me. Like I said, I got to work on me. Um, I'm going to work on making this rifle get the marks off it and stuff. And, Staining it like it was original because that's stupid. Yeah, uh, you see these. You know, I don't want to be too critical. So at least they're out there doing the stuff. That's the most important thing. But uh, I'm gonna be going some more of these reenactment events and filming them. I have my camera right now. I'm just using my cell phone because I'm close up. Uh, it's a good cell phone camera. It's an excellent one. But my other camera, it's got the optical zoom on it. That'll go in far, like a really like more than binoculars with optical. It's got a good lens on it. It's just a uh, it's just a Nikon. It's not a real. It's not a DL, D, DSL, whatever whatever you could call those damn things. But I got this cover for it that goes over the LCD screen, and you could see in the LCD viewing screen perfect with this attachment I got on it. So if I'm in bright sunlight, I can see what the hell I'm viewing at, and I got a way to tripod it up on my body. Whereby I can keep the camera real steady, you know, I have it zoomed in like 10, 12 power optically, not digitally, because you lose the clarity, and I can get some good, uh, you know, footage of reenactment events. But they're not coming up till the weather gets uh, cooled down a lot, because it's too damn hot in the summer for that stuff, you know. Because these are reenactments. This isn't warfare. <laughs> it wouldn't stop warfare for summertime, that's for sure. But I'll be taking. You know, I'll be wearing the stuff when I go out there. I'll be dressed like a Confederate, so. I ain't really getting involved in these SUV camps around here because I think they're a little too timid. Um, but uh, I'm going to be fighting on my own. <laughs> Do my own thing. And uh, but I might get in with the Dixie Defenders out there in Dixie County. I think those guys are real Confederate guys. They impressed me a lot when I was down there. They're pretty far from here. That's one of the problems. They impressed me a lot. But yeah, here's the. So this is a good end fuel. I'm gonna put this, hang this up above on a wall in the living room. I'm gonna have. I'm gonna put this case. I'm gonna, but I'm gonna have this case on it. I'm also gonna dye this case a dark brown. This little sheath, whatever's on there. So get some dye for that today. But yeah, it looks pretty, man. I mean, it's got. You know, see right here. I mean, you know, to me that's nothing. It's like in perfect shape, basically. You know, very, you know, very little. It's almost in perfect shape. But it's not. It's not. You know, that Parker Hal with that barrel and stuff. Being like, they don't even make barrels like that anymore. They, the Parker Hal from the one I got from the early '80s. That barrel. Actually, the Parker Hal is a, is a rendition of the fourth edition Enfield, which actually is not exactly correct for the, the uh, you know the Confederates because they that was a little bit after the Confederates. It's a minor difference though, but not much. These are like the first, second, and third generation Enfield, 1853. The Parker Hal, when he did the repo, they did did the fourth generation, but the Parker Hal has the barrel made exactly with the same taper and rifling. It's a little bit different. Dan, none of none of them, even Petter Soli doesn't even make the barrel like on the outside it looks the same. 
but the rifling and the taper only put the old Parker house made in the UK were made exactly like the barrels themselves were made exactly like the original Anfields and they're more accurate but if you really want a super accurate one you get a Petersoli Whitworth and that thing will run you almost two thousand dollars and the ammo is a lot of money. I was like the hell with that you know I'm gonna be saving up my money for the 1841 mountain howitzer but yeah these are cool I mean it's black powder and then there's another type of black powder called you know I don't know what that I know Hodgson makes a black powder substitute called like triple seven there's another one out there that's brand new I think it's called black burn or something but it's supposed to burn pretty damn clean and I'll probably use that in this I'll probably use that in this or it's not it's like not even corrosive or something so I'm thinking that's pretty good and uh, when you clean these the fastest way to clean them up is just plain water <laughs> tiny bit of soap in it some hot water because these guys when these confederates were firing these things they didn't have all these special cleaners out in the field the only thing they had was water it worked cleans up the black powder pretty good so, but like I said, it came with a sling. This freaking thing is pretty damn nice, man. Probably spray this sling down with some of that Kiwi stuff. That's a sweet what's well, a sweet rifle, man. But I got a very good deal on it. I beat I just beat, I just won the bid by five bucks. So it's five hundred and thirty-five for shipping. And since I use a credit card, fifteen bucks. So he did 3% on a 500. So 550 total delivered to me. The, end, the uh, other end field that was a Parker Howe, which I got a great deal on. That was 1165 I think, delivered. But I tell you the truth, I think that thing is worth over $2,000. If somebody gave me $2,000 for it, I'd take the $2,000 and probably put it to the cannon. I mean, I could buy the cannon right now if I wanted to, but I don't, you know, I don't like doing that like that, you know. So I can get your, your other funds cooking. You know, I'd rather get the money other ways and stuff. But hey, this is a nice. And to me, this is a practical rifle for um, hunting because they have the black powder season for hunting is a lot longer than you know the regular season. You can also take a lot of times they have different rules in different states where you don't have to take. Uh, you know, you can take a doe because. It's a black powder. It depends on what state it is. And this thing, I think, I think it's uh, easily within 150 yards. It's accurate. But if I was going to use it for hunting, I'd probably change. I, even though it's not correct, I put a ghost ring sight up here and up on that front because uh, the ghost ring you get some pretty fast, and accurate shots with that thing. But it's a sweet rifle. Glad I got it. Glad I got it, but now I got something I can take out of it because that Parker Hell is so pretty. I, I, I knew it was unfired, but there isn't even a scratch on it. I mean, nothing. It's like brand spanking new from the factory. I'm like, man, I don't want to. It was in a box. It must have been laying in a box since like 1983 or whenever else it was made. And uh, I don't want to. I don't want to screw it up, you know. But like I said, you know, it's only going to go up in value, so more of an investment this you know probably always be worth the same or maybe a little more was all screwed up or nothing so but it could this is old technology that's got a lot of practical use today just like the uh, 1851 uh, Colt Navy pistol a revolver with black powder so I mean I don't know I never really looked at this stuff but I kind of like it you know because I've had a black powder before that I put together as a kit. I don't know what the hell happened to it, but um, it was like a 50 cal Kentucky rifle or something. Um, but this one, you know, to me this is more practical. I think that one was a flintlock. This one, you know, with the percussion cap and the rifling in there, it's on a smooth board. It's got rifling. It's pretty accurate. I think I think you can shoot this thing pretty accurate about 200 yards. I mean, you probably put it in a circle about that big, a 200 yards, something like that, which is actually damn good for like, 
you know, wild game or something. Yeah, old Cherokee flag. <laughs> see, I'm pointing up in here. I can't even see nothing. I see my face, man. That's how it, so much reflections in this thing. But uh, like I said, I got them. I, I got things down. I can use with the LCD viewer. It could be bright sunlight out. I could be looking all the way down here somewhere, and it could be, you know, I could see what's going on. So I want to get some good video next time the reenactments come up. Um, that's gonna be real good shit. It's gonna be really, really good. So, because um, I was a little, I was doing the best I could with these LCD viewers before. By the way, where's my? Yeah, here she is. <laughs> That's a little snuggy feather. Kit the cat, my mama cat. Onyx is out here, Dixie's out here. Dixie the cat. That's what's laying on here, son. Laying on the old 4x4 four four Suzuki. There's the flags. <laughs> so, anyway, going to be sewing up my uh, SCV MC patches. Still, I'm working on them. I didn't freaking. Paint ass sewing them through the leather vest. It's gonna have independent Confederate states, independent upper rocker, Confederate states, and a bottom rocker. Hey man, it's a cultural thing, whatever you want to call it. You know? They should be getting into that stuff out there in California because you know, I tell you when I was I was gonna ad lib here a little longer. When I was out in California, I remember I was there in the early 90s. I can't imagine what it is today, but I heard about 25 years. That's 25 years ago, and I kind of like some aspects of it, but it was getting a little stupid with rules. But I heard back 25 years prior to the early 90s, you're taking, I guess, what would that be, uh, the late 60s? California was great, fantastic. You name it was stupendous. You're talking the late 60s, early 70s, California it was. Awesome. And they got all these dumb rules in, man. That's why California needs to fly that flag. They need to make it the state flag. Because, you know, I'm, I'm afraid Florida's going to get more like regulated like California, too. That's why I, I don't know what the hell is going to happen, to tell you the truth, man. I think the whole system's coming down. <laughs> We'd go back to like riding horses and shooting black powder muskets and stuff. and growing our own food. Actually in Florida they got a rule now you could anybody's allowed to make a garden. They just passed a state way uh, state law that the HOAs and all this kind of crap, anybody can make a garden in their lawn. They can't do nothing about it. I don't know if it's HOAs can't do nothing, but the cities can. So they had to put they had, they, that's California needs to fly that flag. You know? They need to fly that flag. You know what? YouTube should put that flag on their headquarters and Susan should like endorse it because you know what despite I mean I, I'm gonna just add a little here further you know what all you guys on YouTube you think like the dark needers like stopping freedom of speech not really they're doing it they, YouTube has got way more diverse current content than uh you know the stupid corporate media stuff man every time I go to the gym I'm seeing these I don't subscribe to any, uh, you know what you call that, cable TV stuff. And uh, I'm, I'm seeing this stuff on a cable TV at the gym, and I'm like, what a bunch of garbage, man. It's all garbage, no matter what channel you put on. That's why I never stopped listening to it. But, man, I watch YouTube every day. I watch regular people. I don't watch, the, you know, the recommended channels. And stuff. I mean, what do you call that stuff, the trending? I might watch my recommended channels, but not the trending. And, you know... YouTube or Susan or whatever it is is actually going against the dyed in a wool tweed gray suited um, corporate drabby northeast blah people by letting you know a lot more media content out there than these money oligarchs from the northeast want. She actually is doing that. I just put that song out. Uh, I'm a good old rebel and. Uh, I kind of figured that wasn't going to get monetized, but I didn't think they'd, you know, pull it because it's all over the web. And I had to sing it because 
you know, even though I'm not the maestro, I had to sing it because, uh, you know, it's a copyrighted song, so if I sing it, it ain't copyrighted, right? But I didn't think they'd like it, you know, I figured, well, they ain't monetized, we'll say, well, not that it's going to get a million hits or nothing, but <laughs> the thing is, they let stuff like that out there, you see what I mean? You know? To me, that should be the California flag right there. That's why the West Coast ought to be like the West Coast used to be. Late 60s, early 70s, early 60s. Fantastic. God. I dream for those days again, man. Because uh, the only thing I didn't like about California is like the water goes from north to south. So all that cold water comes in, like, even if you're in South California, the water's cold as crap. People wearing skin diving suits go out there surfing. And, uh, you know, on the East Coast, you could be way the hell up in South Jersey, and the water's coming from the south up, and the water could be, like, 78, 80 degrees, even though you're further north. But then the East Coast is screwed up, you know, but... And I used to like going up to Mount Palomar. I used to take my motorcycle. And see this thing here. Uh, oh, you see it really good. I used to take my motorcycle. We'd be out there at 75 degrees. And uh, take this bike. And uh, go up to Mount Palomar. And there'd be snow up there. And snow up there on top of the mountain. I used to get scared going riding this thing down the mountain from Palomar from California. Because uh, people used to put snow on their cars, and snow would fall off in every curve, switch back going down to Mount Palomar, California. And I'd be on a motorcycle. I'm like, damn, there's a pile of snow just fell off a car. It's right there in the middle of the road. I had to avoid it. But I think it was a little more adventurous back then. <laughs> this bike will be coming out today. I love this bike. Yeah. So anyway. Yeah. Hey, hey there. Got the California boat here, Florida. I mean, you know, who the hell knows what kind of rules these guys are coming up with in California, man. You got this new guy after Jerry Brown. Oh my God, man. God, these politicians, they need their own little city enclave. Let everybody leave. Let them, everybody. You know, I ain't even like, you know, I never smoked marijuana in my life. I mean, but you know what? I don't care if you do. That's the way I am. It's like, do whatever the hell you want. God, it's freaking rule breaks, man. That's why they need that flag out there on the West Coast. That's just the East Coast. Right? Anyway, here's my black powder Enfield. I've talked a little while, but I just want to tell you, you know, don't go, you know, ham, YouTube actually is, you know, I know the people up on the top in corporate headquarters are making some serious money, even though YouTube might not be there making money. But the thing is, they're kind of caught between a rock and a hard place. But on the, on the flip side is, the market's dictating, uh, you know, what what content is being allowed on YouTube, despite the, you know, the dyed in a tweed, wool-suited, freaking frumpy boo-boos from uh, the Northeast financial sector not wanting it. You know, Susan's like, yeah, she's making money, but she's doing it. She's doing it. She's fine by me, man. I mean, I, I mean, I don't mean not saying that. I'm not. She ain't gonna listen to this, but you know what I'm saying is, <laughs> you look at YouTube and you look at the corporate crap that's on cable. There's no comparison, man. YouTube is God. Yeah, I know they they stopped a lot of stuff that was cool from before. But still way better than the shit that's being fed to us from other corporations. You know? So, like I said, I hope to have some, uh, I got my cameras fixed up pretty good. The LCD, um, think that thing you put over the LCD viewer the, that, you know, keeps the sunlight from making, getting it all washed out. You can't see what's going on. That thing has made a huge difference. I'm going to get some really great video here coming up. When the reenactment events come up, it's it's gonna be fantastic. Because I could be, you know, from here to across the street and it could look like I'm right next to it. And I'll be able to get it nice and steady and captured and stuff. So 
but I'll be I'll be filming it and I'll probably take my rifle with me and I'll be dressed as a Confederate and I'll be filming it. So that's part of the reason for doing all this stuff because I won't be doing no reenactment himself. I'm just going to be making sure it gets out there in the media so people can see it. But man, she's a beauty. If you look around, I was looking for a while. I never found the ones I found that were 600 bucks, 100 bucks more than this. They're all beat up. This one's a good deal. Like I said, I just beat the bid by five bucks in the last 15 minutes. Freaking great deal. Oh yeah, the rifle's in there now. The busket's in there, but uh, yeah, I want to see something else. You know, something else I forgot. North, uh, North County, uh, North San Diego County. You know, uh, back when Ross Perot was uh, running for office, not, not that I think the guy was totally legit, but 1992. You know, in uh, North San Diego County, he actually won that county. And that's showing you. You know what that tells me, though. That's independent people thinking. That's the California spirit. I don't know what's going on today, man, but there's something, you know. Bad people moving in there, maybe. I don't know. I don't know what's going on. There's something. Maybe people from the Northeast are going there and screwing it all up. I'm from the Northeast, but I got Southern blood, so I'm a rebel. <laughs> but yeah, they, 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 they didn't vote for Republican or Democrat. They voted independent. They actually, they took, Ross Perot took that county. That's independent spirit. That's why they ought to be flying that flag over in California. See, people don't realize what that's about. That's independence. 